When we attempt to evaluate its promise, we have to bear in mind the distress of a generation or so of malcontents, many of them quite gallant and graceful looking people. So affected was he by his research on the subject that author Ralph Epperson compared the New World Order to George Orwell's 1984. He said, it might have been George Orwell in his book, 1984, that best summarized what the New World Order had in store for the world when he wrote, if you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. Thankfully, the Bible tells us that the tribulation brought about by this New World Order empire will not last forever, but the Lord himself will intervene on behalf of those who put faith in him. But before that hour comes, Jesus said that the world would suffer affliction worse than any it has ever before seen. Jesus said that everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Many believe that the drive for a new world order is a secret operation and that those who are aware of its true intent know full well that what they are planning is a kingdom of evil. Seven days before his tragic assassination, President John F. Kennedy is alleged to have said, there exists in this country a plot to enslave every man, woman, and child. Before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose this plot. But Kennedy was not the first to speak of such things. John F. Hyland, the mayor of New York from 1918 to 1925 said, the real menace of our republic is the invisible government which, like a giant octopus, sprawls its slimy length over our city, state, and nation. World War II General Douglas MacArthur said, I am concerned for the security of our great nation, not so much because of any threat from without, but because of the insidious forces working from within. Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter is quoted saying, The real rulers in Washington are invisible, and exercise their power from behind the scenes. Even President Woodrow Wilson supported such claims. Today, the White House website reports that Wilson, quote, asserted international leadership in building a new world order. However, in 1913, Wilson wrote these words in a work titled, The New Freedom. He said, some of the biggest men in the United States are afraid of something. They know that there is a power somewhere so organized, so subtle, so watchful, so interlocked, so complete, so pervasive, that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. But is this secret power only at work in America? A century earlier, English Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli wrote, the world is governed by very different personages from what is imagined by those who are not behind the scenes. Disraeli warned of a worldwide conspiracy in 1876 when he said, the governments of the present day have to deal not merely with other governments, with emperors, kings, and ministers, but also with the secret societies, which have everywhere their unscrupulous agents and can, at the last moment, upset all the government's plans. In 1920, the Christian Science Monitor wrote that what is important 
is the increasing evidence of the existence of a secret conspiracy throughout the world for the destruction of organized government and the letting loose of evil. While much has been written and said about various conspiracy theories, the Bible makes it clear that the world conspiracy is ultimately against God himself. King David wrote, Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? Their kings revolt, their rulers plot together against the Lord and against the king he chose. Most researchers who investigate the New World Order at some point trace the movement back to Bavaria in the 18th century to a man named Adam Weissant, a professor of canon law at the University of Ingolstadt, a school of the Roman Catholic Jesuit order. Some claim that Weissant himself was a Jesuit. Others say that he was not. Nevertheless, the influence of this powerful order is not to be overlooked. From their beginning with founder Ignatius Loyola in the 16th century, the Jesuits were a subversive organization known for their lust for power, because of which they were suppressed by popes and banished by kings no less than 30 times from the nations of Europe. So nefarious were they that the Marquis de Lafayette in 1799 said of them, It is my opinion that if the liberties of this country, the United States of America, are destroyed, it will be by the subtlety of the Roman Catholic Jesuit priests, for they are the most crafty, dangerous enemies to civil and religious liberty. They have instigated most of the wars of Europe. Napoleon Bonaparte, while lamenting his exile on St. Helena, said, The Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious order. And the aim of this organization is power. Power in its most despotic exercise, absolute power, universal power, power to control the world by the volition of a single man. Even President John Adams wrote these shocking words in a letter to Thomas Jefferson. Of the Jesuits, he said, if ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is this society of Loyola's. It was among such men that Adam Weissopt gained the skills that would one day earn him the credit of being called the profoundest conspirator that has ever existed. Weissopt had his own lust for power and formed a secret society whose plan was to revolt against all established authority on earth. He codenamed himself Spartacus and called his society the Illuminati. The name Spartacus pertains to the ancient gladiator who rebelled against the tyranny of Rome, while the name Illuminati pertains to the greatest rebel of all time. Author Myron Fagan writes that Weisopt himself said that the word Illuminati is derived from Lucifer and means holders of the light. The Illuminati is so called because they are the illumined ones. And they are illumined through uh, according to their own definition of the term, they are illumined by an understanding of the occult sciences, of the satanic sciences, uh, of the mysteries religion. They are illuminated. They are, they, they are not illumined according to, 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 to scripture. Oh no. They are illumined according to occult doctrine, occult understanding, and occult power. And much of their occult power comes through an interaction with guiding spirits, which the Bible calls demons. For they are the spirits of demons that go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. We read that Weissot began to write out the master plan that was designed to give the synagogue of Satan, so named by Jesus Christ, ultimate world domination, so they could impose the Luciferian ideology on the human race. But in order for Weissopt to bring forth his new order, he needed to somehow destroy the old order. The method he chose was to bring about a world revolution. Professor John Robeson, who exposed the Illuminati in his work titled Proofs of a Conspiracy, published in 1798, wrote, the true purpose of the order was to rule the world. To achieve this, it was necessary for the order to destroy all religions, overthrow all governments, and abolish private property. 
Because the average man would not openly follow a satanic plan, the agenda of the Illuminati.